Okay, so I understand that snowboarding can be an expensive sport because not only do you have to buy a snowboard, but you gotta buy a season pass, bindings, and proper gear. So for this video, I'm gonna challenge myself with buying an entire snowboard setup for only $1,000. Now, $1,000 could seem like a lot, and if you don't have that or not willing to spend that, you could probably go a lot cheaper by renting gear, by going to thrift stores or ski swaps. There's probably gonna be a lot of other cheap alternative methods, but I think $1,000 is gonna get me decent gear, but also I'm not gonna be buying brand new stuff. If you really have a bigger budget when learning to snowboard, realistically, you're probably gonna be spending two to $3,000 for an entire setup. So I'm gonna be going the cheaper alternative, and I think this video is gonna be helpful for someone has no gear or has no idea where to buy gear. I'm gonna walk you guys through where I buy gear from, what, what I look for when buying gear. Okay, so basically there's gonna be three places you can buy gear. There obviously is gonna be a lot more thrift shops, whatever, in-person stores, obviously. But for the internet, there's gonna be three places that I'll be using. eBay, Evo, and Amazon. Evo is kind of like the online board shop. There's also a couple other good online places where you can get new gear, such as the house tactics. But for this video, we're gonna be using Evo. We're actually gonna be starting on eBay. Again, I don't think you need to go the brand new, super expensive route when it comes to buying a snowboard. You can go that cheaper method um, as long as the snowboard's in good condition. And on eBay too specifically, you can find pretty good deals on some last year models that are brand spanking new. So that's kind of gonna be the first place we're gonna check. So let's hop onto eBay here. And first thing I'm gonna do is type in snowboards, obviously. Um, and let's see here. Um, again, when it comes to looking for snowboards, first is learning your proper size for a snowboard. Snowboards are measured in centimeters. We had a previous video telling you what size is, how to look for that proper snowboard length. For me, for reference, I'm 5'9", and I usually ride a 155 to 158 centimeter snowboard. That goes right about to my chin here. Usually when you're looking for snowboards, you're gonna want a snowboard that goes from about the top of your chin to the bottom of your neck. Around this range is gonna be a good snowboard length to get you started. If you already have a snowboard, it won't matter if it's too long or too short, but having a snowboard that's proper size is gonna help you kind of learn how to snowboard. So let's see, we're on eBay now. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Already some eye-catching things. Nitro Beast Volcom. I mean, these aren't bad boards already. Um, Looks like some used stuff. So I'm gonna check out this Nitro, or this LiveTech here, sorry. Let's see. Looks like it is used. Looks like it's kind of been put through the ringer on some rough stuff. But $239 for a, probably a decent LiveTech board. Not a bad starting point, but I want something maybe a little bit better. See, there's another thing catching my eye. Oh, this Solomon Craft 158 Rockout Camber. It looks like this board has also been kind of put through the ringer here. Actually, that base looks like it has that base. Actually, looks like it's in pretty good condition. Okay. Let's kind of look at this top sheet. It looks like maybe that's just the design of the top sheet has that scraping on the side. Yeah. Okay, so this actually is not a bad board. It looks like um, it's a rock out camber, um, tuned already, and it is $169, so not bad. Let's go read some details about this. It's Solomon, freshly tuned, um, one edge is dented, ooh. Now this is gonna be kind of a dice roll, one edge dented. Um, but uh, yeah, not too bad. So yeah, I think I'm gonna actually buy this snowboard. Um, but overall, this looks like a decent Solomon board. I mean, it's a last year model, it's a twin tip, it's a camber board. Um, 
which is always fun. And for the most part, this base looks pretty clean. Um, especially when you're buying used boards, it's easy to mess up the base of a board. And if it has a messed up base, then the board's probably pretty clapped. So overall, this looks like a pretty nice board for the price. So I think I'll go for it. When you're looking for a board, it's just important that, you know, if you're buying a new thing off eBay, um, that it's from a respected buyer or a respected seller, that the base is in decent condition and the top sheet looks pretty good as well. So, yeah, I mean, it looks like maybe there's a little dent at the top, maybe a little bit of tear. I can't tell if that's just the top sheet tearing or... Um, either way, it looks like this snowboard could get me down the mountain and it's a pretty nice board for what it is. So, let's move on to the bindings. Okay, so for the bindings, I'm also gonna stay on eBay because I think eBay has some pretty good gear as well for bindings because you can get that last year model for a lot cheaper. So I already know the model I'm gonna ride and that's the Union Fight Pros. Okay, boom, 45 bucks, 85 bucks. These, these $85 ones, new in box. These I think are the exact snowboard bindings I use was these Union Flight Pros last year. Unions are just a great way to go, I think. Solid binding, I mean, pretty cheap. 85 bucks for a pair of bindings is not bad. Um, I think it comes with all the pieces and parts. Look, here's the exact 118 bucks. I mean, when you go cheaper bindings, you can't expect the best quality, but you know, if you're just trying to get on the mountain, this seems like a decent way to go. So, yeah, I mean, I like these Union Flight Pros. I think they look good. Um, next thing to know is they're a large, which I'm a size 10, just about. And a large fits me pretty good. So make sure that you check sizing charts for whatever bindings you're gonna get. They're gonna fit your boots and they're gonna fit your board. But yeah, I think these bindings are look good. So we got the $170 board plus these $85 bindings. Our budget's a thousand, so we're probably gonna go pretty far under that if we kinda keep looking at this type of gear. So next is boots. Now, you can get used boards, you can get used bindings, but I think it's really important that you actually don't go used with boots. Having good boots is gonna make your experience on the mountain a lot better. So where, if you can get a cheaper board and more expensive boots, I think that's a better route. So for the boots, I think I'm actually gonna go over here to Evo, because they usually have some newer gear. We're just gonna look up some snowboard boots. Um, I mean, let's see. Um, I'm gonna type in the Burton and kind of the boots we already have talked about. Burton's a good way to go. Men's. See if we can get some kind of cheaper boots that are still brand new, good quality. Ooh, and Vans, can't forget about Vans. Vans, oh, and 32. 32 is a good brand too. Okay, so let's see what we got. Ooh, right off the bat. These vans right here, tie boots, these are already eye-catching. I like these a lot. Um, see, if you're going boas, looks like you can get some cheap. The shifty boas, we talked about those a little bit. Um, but we're on a budget, so I'm looking for something on that cheaper range. And I like tie boots, so I'm gonna go these vans here. Let's see, it looks like they got them in my size. We got them in size 10. I like, I actually do really like the design on these boots here. Ooh, the blues look good. I think I'll go blues, but let's read a little bit about these. So they're about a four to a five, which for a beginner, you do want to go a little bit of a softer boot. Um, four to five, that's about mid range, pretty decent. Liner, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, even though I'm an advanced rider, I don't even know what this stuff means, to be honest. I'm kind of just looking at the flex 
it has good reviews. Um, we have that medium flex, which you know, good for intermediate and advanced. I don't know, binding style, rear entry, yeah. Quick pull system, traditional laces. Let's look at reviews. Um, I mean, yeah, these look like some decent boots for 200 bucks, brand new. They're probably gonna keep my feet warm on the mountain. I think these will be perfect. Okay, so currently we got a $170 board. We got $85 pair of bindings and we got a $200 pair of boots. So right now we're at $455 and we got our snowboard, we got our boots and we got our bindings. So next, we're gonna want the snow pants. So I think with buying snow pants, this is definitely something you're not gonna wanna get used. Having good snow pants is pretty essential to snowboarding. Whether you're a beginner rider or an advanced rider, you're gonna be spending a lot of time sitting down on a snowboard. So it's worth it just to get really good waterproof pants that you're gonna be wearing all the time. It's gonna be your best investment. So we're gonna be looking on Evo for snowboard pants. Okay, so I mean, there's a lot of good options and I mean, nothing too expensive either. I'm already, I like the Volcom. Volcom's a good brand. These are a little more expensive, but like I said, if there's anything we don't want to cheap out on, it's gonna be snow pants. So expect to have a little bit higher budget when you're looking for snow pants. Make sure you just get something waterproof. Um, and look for sales too. Usually they offer a lot of good sales on Evo. Um, let's see, maybe let's type in our thing here. 686, that's a good brand. Um, Solomon, we know that's a good brand. 32, Volcom, and the North Face. Let's see what we got now. Boom, I really like these 32 pants here. Um, bibs are usually gonna be a bit more expensive, but I'm gonna be rocking no bibs. Um, I, th I really like these camo pants. I think these would look good. Um, you know, 200 bucks for a pair of pants. They look just like classic cool looking pants here. Let's see, let's look at our fabric here. Roomy fit, looks good, good pockets. Yeah, so these look like they're gonna be some good waterproof pants. Um, they look like specifically towards snowboard pants with good pockets. Um, Volcom is a pretty well-renowned brand, so I'm gonna take the word and let's see, these are gonna be my size, is about a large, so about 200 bucks for pants, all right. So after pants, we're gonna need a snowboard jacket. Now, with a snowboard jacket, you don't necessarily need to go the more expensive route because you can really layer up a lot on the mountain wearing hoodies, whatever, with, I might go back to eBay. Let's look at snowboard jackets. I think that's gonna be a good route. Let's see what we can find here. Oh, 32, that color is crazy, but. Pre-owned. Okay, so it looks like some decent options on here, honestly. We got a dope snow jacket, a lot of used gear, which again, I'm trying to go the cheapest route right now. So if you don't want used gear and you have a higher budget, go check out Evo. Evo has all the brand new gear and whatnot. Um, but I'm looking to spend that kind of lower budget. Ooh, 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 hold up, hold up. I like this Volcom jacket. It's a large, which I'm 5'8", usually large snowboard gear fits me perfect. Um, and this Volcom is gonna match my Volcom pants. So, and this is 100 bucks. Pre-owned, it looks like there's no rips, no tears. Um, you know, this looks like a decent jacket that will do me well. Again, it is pre-owned. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be that brand new model. Um, but that's what you expect when you're looking for cheaper gear. But Honestly, this doesn't look bad. This looks pretty good. Like, I think this would definitely get you through a season at least. Okay, so we got snowboard, we got bindings, we got boots, we got the pants, and we got the jacket now. And we still got a little bit of money to spend, $755.
So we have about $200 left to buy gloves, helmet, and goggles. You can also get some face masks too. So I think for helmet, which is the next thing I'm gonna buy, helmet, I'm gonna go back on eBay and see if I can find a good helmet. Helmet is definitely something I don't wanna get used, but sometimes you can find some new gear on eBay. So let's see what we got. New, yep, this are like new, okay. Um, Outdoor Master. I know Outdoor Master is usually actually a pretty good company. Smith. Smith is a great way to go for a helmet. I think getting a good helmet is really important, especially if it's like your first time on the mountain. Just protect your dome piece, guys. It's going to help you out a lot. Okay. You know what? I think I'm just going to go with the Smith. Where'd that Smith go? Gosh dang it. I lost it. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, Smith. Let's see what size they got it in. Oh, yeah. Black is gonna look good on the black. They are out of my size. Maybe they got it in the white. Yes, they did. Okay, so white won't look bad. But I actually have worn Smith helmets, they're pretty good. 75 bucks is actually a pretty good deal for some Smith, for a Smith helmet. And it looks like it's got the earmuffs, whatever. Honestly, it looks like a pretty good helmet. It's gonna fit me. Now, let's see, let's read the condition. Brand new, unused, that's what we're looking for. Um, sizing. Now, sizing for helmet can be difficult to find, but luckily, usually a lot of them have like a little dial at the end that you can kind of like fit it to your head a little bit better. So when you're looking for a helmet, sometimes going a little bit bigger option is better than going the smaller option. So yeah, this looks like pretty good. I have kind of a bigger head, so I usually wear a large. I think, you, you know, everything's measured in centimeters, so just, you know, get a little band thing, wrap it around your head, get the, you know, kind of general idea of how many centimeters your head is gonna be. But yeah, okay, so let's see, 75 bucks. Not too shabby for a helmet. And a decent helmet at that. So next up is goggles. Now we got about 125 bucks left. And I know just the goggles. These are gonna be on Amazon. These are the 986 goggles. They're 40 bucks and this is my company. Um, they're honestly really quality goggles. I'm super stoked about these. We also offer a lens pack as well. But Amazon's a great place to go goggles because you can kind of get some just some classic good goggles for cheaper because if you're buying like some brand new Oakley goggles, they're gonna be like 400 bucks. There's not a bunch of quality difference from like a brand new nice pair of Oakley goggles from like the 986 goggles, which are 40 bucks. Like these goggles, like I've used all season and they're pretty solid goggles, I'm gonna be honest. They're anti-fog, rimless, and they have the magnetic lens thing so you can get uh, extra lenses too. So, and it's unlimited steez. Guys, come on now. These are gonna be a good way to go. But again, um, you know, there is a bunch of other options too for snowboard goggles. So, you know, Amazon's a great place to just start. Look at this, like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, you know, 13, I don't know how good those are, but I mean, Oakley, even 85, that's not bad. You could probably get some good goggles on here on Amazon. So that's gonna be probably first spot I would go when looking for goggles. But we're gonna put down 40 bucks because we got those 986 gogs. We are at $870. This is actually, spending $870 is a pretty good deal for some, honestly, some decent equipment that could probably last you two to three seasons, depending how much you ride. And there are gonna be a lot cheaper routes to go if you're looking at thrift stores or going to ski swaps, you'll probably find cheaper gear. Or even if you're on eBay, you'll probably find some good deals if you just kind of keep your eye on the market. But to finish it off, we're gonna look for some gloves and we're also gonna see if we could buy some ski masks. So for gloves, this is another thing we don't wanna cheap out on. Having cold hands on the mountain sucks. So I definitely am gonna go to Evo and look for some new snowboard gloves. I think that's a good way to go. I don't want some used crap that's gonna not be waterproof. Gloves get pretty clapped pretty fast. So if you're gonna buy anything new, it should be your gloves and your snow pants, if anything. 
Now maybe you could buy some used gloves as like a backup pair. I mean, I already know if you're looking for some gloves, the kind is a great way to go. Um, these are a little more expensive, but um, the kind's gonna be a great way to go. I also want mittens. I'm a mitten person. I think mittens keep my hands a little bit warmer. 686, that's a good brand. I already know that. Patagonia. Oh, Patagonia's, if you don't know Patagonia, it's also a pretty solid brand. For 79 bucks, it's not a bad way to go. Usually like leather gloves, I can tell these have that leather. They're gonna last the longest. I mean, they're more expensive, 165 bucks, but if you're buying leather gloves, they're gonna last longer than any other type of glove you'll get. So that's a good way to go. Um, let's see, I actually wanna, I think these Patagonias, like I know Patagonia is a really good reputable brand. Reputable brand. Um, actually, I don't know about these. They don't look too waterproof, I'm gonna be honest. But these Burton Gore-Tex, these, these puppies look solid. Um, let's see, looks like they got these in my size. Large, I just, everything large for me. I think that's just kinda like where I'm at with that. Okay, so we're gonna get these. These are about 85 bucks. Okay, so currently our total is $955. That's not including our face masks yet. So that's our next thing we're gonna go get. You don't want to use face masks. Someone else is putting their face right on it. That's kind of disgusting. I would definitely just get something new because they're not really expensive to get them new. So we're on Amazon now. And we got, what, 45 bucks to spend? So we could probably get a couple of these. I mean, I don't know, this looks like this tough hardware, I don't know if I'd go that route. I'm gonna be honest, it looks kind of like a pain. You can honestly, with face masks, simpler the better. Like, I think just black, like, I don't think, I mean, unless you want one of these weird ones, like, go for it, but just get some black, I'll just go with anything. Um, I might even get a couple of them. Why is this dude's eyes so blue, holy cow. Um, Blackstrap, this is also a pretty reputable brand right here. I've worn Blackstrap quite a bit. These are great face masks. Um, it looks like there's also a lot of cheaper alternatives, but for this case, I think just having one quality face mask is gonna do good. So we're gonna go this Blackstrap route. Yeah, these look pretty nice. 40 bucks. Okay. Snow, we got a snowboard for 170 bucks. We got snowboard bindings for 85 bucks. Boots, 200. Pants, 200. Jacket, 100. Helmet, 75. Goggles, 40 bucks. Gloves, 85. And to finish it off, we got that black strap face mask for 40 bucks. This comes to a total of $995, right under our limit of 1,000 bucks. And again, this gear is gonna last me a couple seasons. This was all pretty good quality gear for under $1,000. Now, if you're going the more expensive route and you're gonna wanna buy all the brand new gear, your budget should be about three to $4,000. So for the type of quality of gear we got combined with the budget we had, I think we got some good deals and this is gonna set us up for the season pretty good. You can always go rent gear, test out, see if you like snowboarding, and you can go to thrift stores or those ski swaps, like I said, you'll probably find some cheaper gear, or you just keep your eyes open on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. People like to post up some nice gear for pretty cheap, so just kind of keep your eyes out. This was not including a season pass. So unfortunately, if you're gonna go for a season pass, those usually range from 400 to $1,000, and a day ticket could be anywhere from like 40 bucks to like $300. So this is another thing you should take into account when budgeting for snowboarding is your season pass and um, day tickets. However, I would like to say this, if you're buying a day ticket, you should look because sometimes beginner slopes at offer free day tickets. For example, my um, hometown hill offers completely free lift tickets for just the bunny slope. So that means I can go ride for free. I mean, I'm only gonna be able to do the big bunny slope, but I can ride for completely free to see if I even like snowboarding. Also, um, when you're looking at season passes and you're getting into the sport, try looking for a season pass pre-season or right after the season. 
because a lot of mountains offer some pretty good deals, 50% off season passes when you buy them at a good time. A bad time to buy a season pass is like the day of the start of the season. Like December 1st, you're gonna go snowboard and you wanna go buy a season pass. I'm not telling you you shouldn't buy it, but I will tell you that is gonna be when snowboard season passes are the most expensive. So take that into account if you're really into writing and you get into it, um, look for, you know, maybe save up some money for so when that end of the season comes and they offer a 50% off deal for season passes, it could save you some money. So I hope this video helped kind of realize that you don't have to have a bunch of money to get into snowboarding. I mean, yeah, a thousand bucks is a lot of money, but for the amount of gear we got and the quality of gear we got was pretty good. Like all of that stuff is gonna definitely last me a couple seasons and it, it's gonna be a, probably a good investment to be honest. So also one last thing I would like to know is eventually Pocket Coach is gonna actually have an online marketplace within the app. So soon, you'll probably be able to buy a bunch of gear on pocket coach itself just keep that in just keep that in mind because i want to have a place where you can just buy and sell snowboard stuff for good quality <laughs> peace guys